you're trying to develop an algorithm that detects manufacturing defects, right? Defects detection system. And uh, let's let's assume you have a ground truth of 920 good products and 80 bad products. So you develop two models. Model A classifies 950 products as good and 50 is bad. And model B, on the other hand, predicts 890 good products and 110 bad products. From the results they're able to derive, you discover that an algorithm has high precision, low recall, and the other one has a low precision and high recall. So can you can you tell? Model A has low recall and high precision, while model B has high recall, low precision. So let me explain. This is what's called a confusion matrix, and a confusion matrix is just simply a two by two dimensional matrix that shows your true negatives uh, false negatives true positives and false positives true negatives are examples that your algorithm thought were negative and were actually negative while true positives on the other hand are examples that your algorithm thinks are positive and were actually positive so you got it correctly false negatives on the other hand are examples that your algorithm thought were negative but they were actually positive so you got it wrongly I mean, it missed it. More concretely, <laughs> false positives are those that your algorithm thinks are positive, but they were actually negative, right? Yeah, so when I draw my confusion matrix, I actually have my actual labels on the x-axis like this and predicted on the y-axis. So I mean that's that's what works for me. You could you could do it the other way. I've seen I've seen um other blogs, other tutorials do it the other way, like I've predicted at the top and actually on the sides, but it, this is what works for me. Back to precision, you know precision is true positives divided by false positives plus true positives, while recall is false positives divided by true positives plus false, wait what the f- <laughs> so recall is true positives divided by false negatives plus true positives. Real quick, let's run some numbers. These figures are hypothetical, but they pretty much represent what you'd see in a normal confusion matrix. And when you calculate the precision and recall from the formulas that I gave earlier, you discover that model A has higher precision, lower recall, and model B, which is on the right side, has a lower precision and an higher recall. And then this leads to what's called an F1 score. And an F1 score is pretty much just, uh, it's more like an average of your precision and recall. Model B is kind of like better than model A going by the F1 scores. The higher your F1 score, the better the model is, like the better the model performed. All right, so finally, why do you need to know any of this? Error analysis. <laughs> when you want to perform your error analysis to know how well your model is performing for each class of defects, then Having the precision and recall of each type of defect is going to help you to pinpoint um, the kind of defects that your model is predicting very well and the kind of defects that it's bad at. So you could have a good precision and recall balance on certain types of defects and it might be really imbalanced in other types of defects. So you'd know if you need to maybe augment your data for that class of defects or you need to or you need to create more training examples for that specific kind of defects because your algorithm is performing poorly on it